Alright, so we're here for a new cooling call. I was showing a unit that uh, had gray stuff leaking out of it. Blew out the trap, rinsed off the coil, and fixed it. I was getting ready to leave and the guy says, no, that's not the right unit. This is the unit. So we're over here and it's not running. Thermostat's turned on. We're checking voltage. We got 240 something coming in on each leg. And uh, so we're, we got all three legs here. But I have nothing on my common and R, which has got to be a safety device of some sort tripped out. Wow, I actually can read it. That's unusual. All right, so what would break our R? So R comes in. Right, so we check these fuses and we have two of them that are blown, which is kind of interesting that the outdoor fan contactor is open because they're breaking two legs. But the third leg's wired hot, so that leg that is feeding it is the one that's probably going to ground, otherwise it should be isolated. There's two blues, two yellows, two blacks. We've got two fans. So, we're obviously isolated here. So we've got two different fans there. Can't really undo that very easily. See, so they crammed all three of those things on there. power for your transformer over here. This one here I can't even undo. Why oh, do you got one thick fat one and one light one? Are they splitting that somewhere else? The yellow. over the transformer thing and splits all up. They kind of all share that. Black goes straight over to the transformer. Also comes down to L1 on this board. Outdoor fan motor, indoor fan motor, they're sharing off of that too. Boy, they got all kinds of crap being fed off that. I guess it didn't look close enough. Before the contactor, they're feeding the indoor fan motor. And then the black one, the other leg comes down and then the black comes down because the board out of the board comes back up here and connects to the black. So all that crap just tied onto those fuses. I hate fuses. Why didn't they just put it on here with breakers? And then the next question gonna be is do I have that funky 25 amp fuser on my truck? Now it's indoor fan three phase. Does not look like it is because it's got a capacitor. So no, it's not. So I doubt that is our problem. Let's go over here and check the ground on it, which probably won't even get it, but let's check it anyway. Nope, our indoor fan is not the problem because it's isolated here at the uh, contactor. Here's the outdoor. Yeah, these are feeding it. Here's the power's coming in. Let's go up to here, loop down to here. So sometimes I like to follow wires. So sue me. This makes it easier to see what's going on here so so this one here goes up so the big yellow and the big black one both go to the fans uh, outdoor fans this one here we got one leg there isolated now we know it is let's see if it's to ground nothing to ground that's the that is the outdoor fan motor outdoor fan motor. This one's shared with the transformer though. Pretty sure the transformer is this yellow light wire here. And this is why you want to make sure your power's off and locked out. This is the ones that are shorted. Yep, I'm picking it up on my heater there. I'm hitting resistance. It's not beeping right now. It's not low enough. So let's undo these two and find out which one's the actual culprit. So that one's we're only touching one side. That one's got 48,000. This one here goes to the other side. So they're actually looping through. Yeah, it's feeding two different ones. Oh, and they're going then to the black, which then goes to SR2. 
got black going to the crankcase heaters, yellow is feeding both of them, both of them picking it up. So what's happening is the, if it's shorted internally completely, it'll loop through it and back on the other leg. So they'll both show shorted until you isolate it back here at that connection point on the black. So that's, that's why it's uh, looping through. Uh, unfortunately, we'll have to go to one of the heaters here and isolate it to do it, which we've got some right here, but the actual junction of that yellow thing is right here coming in. We could always chop it right there if we didn't want to dig into there, but that wouldn't look very professional. Let's do this one because it's closest, but you know, probably won't be this one. There it is. There's that crankcase heater going to the black wire going down. So, what better way to find out than to snippity snip. Let's check it and see what we got now. That would isolate the one side. Make sure we're still alive. Nothing there. Nothing there. So I would say that that was our heater that was screwed. So now, to confirm it, go down here and go to that heater, which is right here. We can just strip this turkey back. And the other side of it, which is right here. There we go. Both of them are stripped. Verify we're still good. Go to this. I keep that one away from it. There we go. The resistance is coming through there to ground. Take your point where you want it at. There or there. Either one. So that thing is shorted. That is your short. I don't know if that... I don't, I don't seem like it'll pull out. That does not look like it'll pull out. Well, we're going to snip those so that they know that something's not right. And because we got wires feeding all kinds of sorts of different things, this right here, we've got to close up too. So these two here will tape, you know, together as a pair so that we know that these are our crankcase heaters and we'll label it. There we go, I know this is good together. We'll leave this a little long. We'll fold it back on itself and then we'll use my blue marker to label it as crankcase heaters. See how we just made a tag there? C, C, H. Get some wire nuts on that. Put those on there. Might be might stick a little better. Yeah, it's holding on there pretty good. It's eating the, the casing of the wire. Those ain't falling off. So there's that. I'll just check these compressor lugs to see if they're tight. They seem like they are good. All right, what we could do, I'm gonna look through the truck some more, but I'm pretty sure I don't have anything. We can add a little spacer of metal in there to help that make its contact point. Um, not exactly what I prefer, but at this point, if they need the cooling, what are you going to do? Are you going to go for perfect? Uh, I guarantee you we probably don't have any at the shop. Um, probably have to be ordered. Uh, we're not in our usual town that would have electrical. So let's look a little closer at this. We need about, about a nickel's worth. <laughs> so we can get some THHN and uh, Put it at the bottom there. Uh, put it in the pocket. I don't want to put it on this end there. You see it's kind of, kind of fruity the way that is. I don't like that. I don't even really touch. Even well, even this one here is kind of loose. It don't get tighter until it gets to the very end. So they're about the same there. So you can kind of. I guess that one there kind of gets a better better touch to it. What we're going to do though is we're going to come back and change this. This is a temporary fix and if things don't work out, this is a 20 amp fuse versus the 25 that we needed. The reason why I'm getting away with the 20 is because that crankcase heater is not going to be pulling amperage. So I would say that's going to be probably a good portion of that amperage that it was rated for. So let's see if this uh, is able to make a little more of a spacer here. We'll kind of make us a little bit of a spring. This is not what I would like to do, and to be honest with you, I've never even tried it, so I don't even know if it's gonna work. But uh, it's worth giving it a shot, I spec. Yeah, you got a device in here that was shorted. 
So now it's just a matter of finding the freaking uh, fuse that'll fit because it's a weird fuse is from 20 some years ago yeah, that we don't use anymore. 1492. Yeah, pretty much. Mayflower Express. So yeah. I'm trying to make something. Bypass it? Yeah, it can't bypass it, but I, I'm trying to make a 20 amp fit, but it's a little shorter. So I'm kind of putting some metal in there to, to give me the extra length I need. Um, are you guys even using this in that area? Yeah. Uh, back here they are? Yeah, it's the back air conditioner. I mean, are they using it like this week, like through the week, or is it just the weekends? Yeah, it's Tuesday night and then on the weekends. Okay. Tuesday and Friday for sure. Okay. I mean, because I can get the part tomorrow or the next day or whatever, but I didn't know if it was that big of a deal tonight or not. Yeah, they're miserable, they're miserable. They'll <laughs> get over it. I, uh, I'll probably be fine here in a minute. I just gotta grab some more wire and, and try to make it so it'll fit yeah, a little tighter. Load it up. All right, so I went and got some PHH in. Let's see if this works a little better. Once I got it figured out what it takes to do, it just doesn't take very much, just a slither. So I'm just kind of doing one little fold here. And I can pull this right back out. So you know, we are not bypassing the fuse. That would be a no-no. So it's still fused, I'm just making it fit. There we go. We can check amperage here and here once it's running. So that'll tell us where we're at on that. I really don't like the way they did that wiring. That really sucks. That is less than desirable. So we got nice breakers here for everything else. Yeah, 47, 47, and 22, but nothing. Let's just check these out, make sure they're not loose. Yeah. All right, well, let's get this cover on and get her started. All right, the old beast kicked on. And run. Oh, that's always nice when the water starts pouring off the side. Wonderful. Don't really need that. It's like I said, we put a 20 amp fuse in there. It requires a 25, so we are pulling 11.9 on one, 12.36 on the other, and the one on bottom is pulling 11.65. Let's see what our compressors are pulling here. 26, 23, 24. Here they supposedly had worked on this not too long ago, so it sounds like it's been working. I mean, it's pumping out heat. It is 508. I mean, she's pumping out some major heat. So I'm going to say she's running. I would say they've already done check the refrigerant and everything else. That coil. Just put the bare bone minimum in here. Wrench, crimper, stripper, two screwdrivers, that's it. And honestly, it's just about all you ever usually need anyway. Good for there, so I'll just grab a couple screws and uh, button this turd up. Okay, so that's gonna wrap that one up there. Not real complex, just need to track down the wires. You know, you may not like the way I do it, that's the way I do it. We got there eventually. So it's uh, it's fixed. Well, it's running, and uh, we'll get back with the right fuses. And I gotta check to see if we can get a replacement crankcase heater. If we even if they even want to do it, I don't know. All right, we got a new crankcase heater with some uh, thermal paste. There's the heater itself, and we got the correct fuses. So let's get this thing in there real quick. Now I was told this may not come out, and it didn't seem like it wanted to wiggle. So we may have to drill that out. Get the compressors off, and here's our fans. Actually, it's not too badly warm. Yeah. yeah, that one definitely's got some warmth to it. I mean, it wasn't the ideal way of doing it. Um, but it's taking a few days to get back, and you know, what do you do? It was safe. I mean, I wanna make sure you understand that. That's all plastic in there. All we did was basically extend the length and the fuses we used were actually smaller than the original fuses. 
original fuses, which even these are hot, and this is in the same spot. I think it's just horrible design. I mean, it's really, it doesn't fit in there very tight. I mean, it's kind of crappy. I don't know if there was a spring in there originally. Like I said, I haven't worked on too many of this particular model. It's uh, definitely a little older one. There's that one. And there's that one, all out of there. So we didn't damage anything, nothing's, nothing's messed up. Like I said, there's not much of a spring to that as it gets back in there. Make sure it's all clean. And then uh, the top two are the only two that we're on with the heater. So we don't have to worry about replacing that third one because that's the reason why it didn't blow is because it was not being used for those things. Hi there. Are you gonna need it inside for anything? Um, not really. Um, the disconnect's in there, but I did it from out here. So, I mean, if you gotta go, not a big deal, but. Well, I just got two errands to run. It might take me a half hour. Yeah, you should be fine. Okay. Yeah. So the new one's right here. Here's the thermal paste. Here's that little ring thing that helps hold it in place. It kind of slides onto there from what I'm seeing. This is the first one of these I've had to replace, this particular design. So we'll go ahead and get that on there and then we'll squish that around. I'm sure this not only helps uh, get good heat transfer, but it's gonna probably be somewhat of a, like an anisease of some sort. I would think it definitely would keep the crap out of the uh, well from getting in there. There we go. Look at that. Just like new. And that gives you a nice long wire here that we really don't need. So I might as well go ahead and run this. About to make it all the way back to the contactor. Yeah, I can. I can make it all the way back to the contactor. Yeah, there's the two wires going back. It's almost kind of pointless. We got the heater coming through here, back up through here. And it'll actually hit the penetration through there. And then we'll be able to tie on to the same location that the other ones were. And uh, won't we'll have no couplings or anything like that. There we go, we'll wire tie that all back up again. I got check amp draw and see where it's at. All right, so we got those on there. I was looking at these. Those look like dummy terminals. They uh, don't have any continuity between the bottom power feed and there, and they have nothing to the top wires up here, which is your low voltage. I've never seen contact with dummy terminals, and that's what it looks like to me. There's nothing but a spade terminal there with a, a nut or a screw going right into the base of the contactor. I've not seen that before. Usually you just see a double up or something like that. So that's something new I've never noticed before. Unless it uh, has some sort of normally open, normally closed type switch mechanism on it. So anyhow, we've got the wire for it coming to here. 
and to there. So we'll amp that here in a second, make sure it works. Get everything strapped up, everything's good to go there. Uh, I got this all back together. Uh, only thing I'd like to clean up is that wire there, which I don't know if there's a good way to crawl back in there. All right, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world to do, but we got it wire tied back here, kind of strapped it up in here. That'll at least keep it out of the mud that's down there, and that mud's got rocks in it and vibration and stuff, you know, eventually could eat into that wire. They've got it strapped over there in that corner of the foot, so we should be good to go there. I don't have any of those caps for that king valve, so that's uh, about it on that. All these up here seem to be fairly okay. I don't uh, particularly love them, but there's only so much you can do. And it's better than what it was. Got this all strapped up, so we're good there. Nothing's close to rubbing into anything. They've got a nice rubber sh uh, shroud or whatever there for that. And everything's back together here. So like I said, we've got our new fuses here, 25 amperes. Just what they had in there before. Doesn't tell you what exactly they were on the schematic, so hopefully they're the right ones. So let's go ahead and check our amp draw here. We've got 0.4 amps on that one, and we've got 0.4 amps on that one. Going to our leads here on this. That's in total 1.1 so far. We'll turn on our compressors. There goes our blower. And we'll see what happens here in a second when this kicks on. Do end rush. Kind of curious to see how bad that is. All right, the fan's finally kicked on. Got 50 amps in rush, which ain't uncommon for those. And the running amps is 12. So basically they doubled the size of the actual working amps. And curious to see whether they shut it off when the compressors are running. Let's go over here. And they're still running the heaters even when it's uh, running the, uh, the fans, which we've got, what, one compressor there running, which is 23. or anything so it didn't hurt that fuse at all and uh, all the current was put on that one there because that's where the load of you know the short slash load uh, for the uh, crankcase heaters was at so yeah no damage would have been done to that otherwise if they were all three together being used I always recommend changing all three fuses because it was just microseconds before the next one would have blown so so 247 248.9 248 or 249.3 so yeah we're well balanced and we're good to go there Let's save this for later all right guys that wraps things up if you enjoyed the video make sure you give it a like subscribe click notification bell and until next time we'll catch you guys on the next one